Welcome to Podnuts Daily for December 19th, 2008, episode number 125. Frustrating day today. <clears throat> went in there trying – we had a lot of work. We have a lot of work, first of all. But went in there trying to get a lot of things done. Ended up getting almost nothing done. Never. It's never fun when that happens. Had a Windows 98 machine come in. It wouldn't boot up. What was it doing? Gave us some kind of DLL error and then told us we have to reinstall Windows. That's what the error was after that. So we decided to reinstall Windows, and um, it was more like a Windows repair we did. I don't exactly know how we did it. We booted from DOS. We put in a Windows 98 disk and typed setup, and I don't know what happened after that. But all I do know is after it finished, it got to the screen where Windows 98 tried to load, and you get that bar scrolling across the bottom. I don't know a lot about Windows 98 personally, actually, and um, that's what anyway, that's what happened. I'd love to put XP on the machine. We're going to find out if we can do that tomorrow. It's a Pentium 3. It's going to run Windows 98 like a rocket, but it, it could also run XP too. So We're definitely not going to put ME on it unless we absolutely have to. Uh, I had a Vista machine, Vista laptop. What was it? Uh, Gateway. And um, aside from one of the fan blades breaking in the CPU cooling fan, which I don't know how you break one of those blades on those fans. That's very odd. I mean, that fan is tucked in there pretty good, blocked by like plastic and and vents and this kind of thing. And one blade broke off. Very strange. Besides that fact, um, well, first I ordered I ordered a fan on eBay, thirty bucks for a fan. Um, besides that fact, it was having problems with video, like video problems, like uh, viewing videos, streaming videos. One of the things that was happening was Media Center was – Windows Media Center, and this is Vista Home Premium. Windows Media Center was shutting down with the error, Windows Media Center has stopped working. Um, interactive video – or inner video player was also crashing saying – when that crashed, it would say inner vi- – inner, interactive video? Is that what it's called? Ah, oh, gosh. I can't remember the name of it. Um, that would crash too. Anyway, to, to handle the Media Center problem – there was a fix I found online just by Googling the error. Media Center has stopped working in quotes in the word Vista. That's what I did a Google search for. <laughs> and what we did was you go into the root directory. You go into – you you show hidden files. You make it so you can see hidden files. You go into program data file folder. Then in the Microsoft folder, there's a folder called eHome. And in eHome, it stores a lot of the Media Center settings. If you and they're all temporary files. If you delete those files, Media Center will load, but it will be it'll load minus. I think of some of the customizations you have done to it are gone. You have to redo them. Anyway, once we d- emptied that file out, that folder out, that error stopped. So we were good with that. The inner video player. What I did to fix that was just I upgraded inner video player, and that fixed that problem. And the last thing she was saying was she was having a problem streaming WMVs with Window Media Player. Uh, I, I couldn't find any place to stream WMVs. I don't know. So I couldn't test that. But for what I did do for that was um, – what did I do? I didn't do anything yet for that. But to, maybe to help some of the streaming problems she was having, I went in, and she was using Internet Explorer. I went into Internet Explorer uh, or Internet, Internet Options in the control panel. And I just reset Internet Explorer settings. Whenever somebody talks about browser setting browser problems and they have Internet Explorer – I go into Internet Ex- or Internet Options and I just reset Internet Explorer settings. It almost always fixes the problem. If they still can't connect to the Internet for whatever reason, I run Winsock XP Fix and that does a lot too. Um, next thing I want to talk about. We have a customer who on their own decided to reinstall Windows and formatted all of their data. I believe they did a quick format. I'm not 100% sure. In this case, I usually use Recover My Files, the program Recover My Files. I didn't have my Recover My Files program installed on any of my computers because we, I've gone through a couple computers at the shop and it was not installed on this one, so I didn't have that with me. So we pl- threw in the Ultimate Boot CD, and the Ultimate Boot CD has a stack of about 10 data recovery programs built into it. We used the one from Piriform, which is the maker of CCleaner. It's called Recuva, R-E-C-U-V-A. It got about, and we ran that. It got about halfway through its search, and then it crashed. So we weren't happy with that. Uh, we didn't try any of the other ones yet. If anybody's got any good suggestions for free recovery programs, I'm interested in knowing about that. Um, what else do we have? We installed a motherboard socket 775 with a Celeron, 
Uh, do we have any problems with that? Yeah, here, here's one of the things. Uh, I guess we could talk about this. A lot of times um, a customer comes in who needs a new motherboard. They have a socket 478. And they're running a Pentium 4 or Celeron. It has DDR memory. And they're running everything off IDE drives. Well, when I go to Micro Center, sometimes I can't pass up the deals on these on these motherboards they have, like 50 bucks for a brand new motherboard, plus $39 for a Celeron chip. So for the price of a socket 478 motherboard at the place I usually get it, I can get a socket 775 motherboard with a new Celeron chip and then I could put that in the machine. The problem is now I have to take DDR and I got to take replace it with DDR2 because Micro Center doesn't sell any DDR motherboards anymore. They don't sell any socket 478 motherboards anymore. I wish they did. Um, so I, it's a nice upgrade to get them up to like a dual core Celeron, socket 775, dual core memory, and you're spending about the same amount of money, a little bit more maybe, as you are with a so- just a regular socket 478 motherboard. The problem is if most of these motherboards now come with only one IDE port. So if the person has two CD drives and an IDE hard drive, you're kind of screwed because you, you can't split that cable into three. You have to plug in the both CD drives into one IDE port and your hard drive into the other one. Well, to get around this problem, and this is just for a little bit more money, also you get a PCI card that has two IDE slots in it. And this way you can run your CD drives off of that. The problem is you can't boot off the CD drives from that. So it, get, it got a little messy, but we figured it out. All right, it's going to be a short show today, guys. Uh, I didn't have a lot of stuff going on, and I forgot my notes at the shop, by the way. So maybe I might have had some stuff going on, but I don't have the notes with me. Nebin has a voicemail here. Let me just play that while I think of some other stuff to do. Here we go. This is Nebin's voicemail. Hey, Steve, it's Ben. Uh, I got a couple of things. Uh, first one, I was listening to your, well, I guess, most recent show. Um, don't remember. <laughs> uh, you were talking about, uh, I believe it was part, BART PE using memory. It does use memory, but a short uh, span of it. Uh, and it does work around uh, any memory errors, I believe. So that's why you were able to load BART PE and not Windows. Um, and the second thing, uh, let's see, I believe it's PayPal. Uh, I do the same thing for my website, um, but I just ask them for their driver's license also just to verify that they are who they are and uh, had no problem with, uh, you know, like credit card fraud and stuff like that, just in 